Hazy, it's going to be a big master Sunday for me. Reason being, I'm going to my buddy Brando's house. And I'm going to watch the Masters with Brando. He had heart surgery, big time surgery. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of dicey there for a little while. But he's going to be okay. I want to thank everybody at St. Mary's Hospital in Kitchener. His sister, her husband, and their kids for looking after him. Yes. Love Brando. He's one of my favorite guys, too. Yeah. Make sure you say hi. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to the Masters. I'm going to call you guys Sunday afternoon from the course. I want to FaceTime. I can't do a FaceTime. Phones aren't allowed. So, well, how are you going to call you have us? Land are you gonna go they to have landlines. Like free, oh, yeah, pay phones. It's free. Apparently, they just have phones all over the place that you can call for free on Augusta National. Just go see Duthie and use his phone and FaceTime. All right. Either, the, the point is I'm going to call you on okay. Sunday. From from the Masters, and I want right. to talk to Brando. I want to say hi. I want to see what's cooking. Yeah. All right, that's my anyway, plan. Anyway, that's ma different. Masters mean different things. Yeah, I'm thankful for this Masters. Awesome, seeing it with my buddy. Yeah, can't wait for that. Yeah, it's going to be a beauty. And listen, Tiger Woods is one under through three. You've got uh, a leaderboard that is is cooking with gas right now. It was a late start, but everyone's moving and shaking out. DeChambeau seven under. Your boy Danny Willett. Danny Willett. Danny Willett won, right? Danny won back in the day. What did he win in 16 or something like that? Dude, um, my buddy Sino was going to be – he loves Danny, Danny Willett. Willett. I don't know why. I There's something about it. It kind of chaps me a little bit when guys just – like, why not – I don't know. I like Danny Willett, and he deserves a sniff, but – Give me a big name. On He's that, not going to win it, though, man. With Dude, all the respect. Don't say that. He's a Masters champion. I, I know that. I understand that. But he's really fallen off since winning the Masters. And <laughs> he I, has. I, like, I, again, it's just a fact. I'm not sure he's won on tour in the last yeah. few years. I don't believe it's he like has. It's like Charlie Schwartzel. He won the Masters. I don't yeah. know if Charlie, he hasn't been sniffing around a lot of leaderboards. No, but he's made a lot of money. Charl. Schwartzel, I believe, has Charles. made a lot of cash. How is it? Is it pronounced Charles? Charles. I think it's Charles. Do you know Jonas? No, I do not. You're not familiar with Charles Schwartzers? Never heard of him, no. You see <laughs> he never JJ wheeling around out there? Yeah, he's got the uh, the Malbin gear going. Yeah, he's he's bringing back the 50s like baggy pants. No. That's his new vibe. That's Can I ask look. you guys, would you rather win it once and then just do nothing else? Or yeah. be like consistently like pretty good, but like you never actually... Um, you give me the green jacket to wear at cocktail parties the rest of my life, yeah. I'll be yeah. quite happy. Yeah, you get to go back every year, champion's dinner, you're right in there, I'm sure everything's comped. But do people like look at that guy and be like, what is that guy doing here? Pro probably when you look at the picture, it's like, all right, who is that again? And it'll it'll only get more and more pronounced like 20 years from now, it'll be, who is that guy? Danny Willett. But that's the nature of, of the tournament. Like, Danny Willett will be playing in 20 years. He'll be out there, hey, there's a great Danny Willett. Meanwhile, the guy yeah. hasn't played pro golf in 25 years. Okay. Master's legend. Like yeah. just He can Larry Mize it and just go out there and start chipping and putting. He will. He will. All right, Tiger, I think, just dropped a stroke, so he's back to even through four. Um, all right, Pierre LeBron coming up here in a moment. It's Pierre's birthday today. So very nice of Pierre to join us. We have Leafs Devils tonight. If there's an empty net late for the Leafs, do you think Matthews is a lock to get on the ice? Do you think he won't get on the ice? Jonas, what are your what's your where are you at with the empty nets? Like I don't really care like that much. I, I thought it was a little weird. I if I I don't know why Sheldon Keith brought it up this morning. Like you're just kind of rehashing well, it. Like, he knows it over. people are buzzing about it. You're right. I didn't uh, hear like, what he had to say. Is there like what he just did he said basically he was say like the he said he was the next guy up basically. Like he was going to get out there. He's not part of their six on four lineup. Right Come on, dude. Make him part of it. That's, it's just like that's, that's thing, yeah. it was like, just like, like you summed it up best. It was just a little weird, right? Yeah. Like that's it. It's a little weird that you wouldn't say, go out there and stay out there for the last three minutes and get a goal. Yes. Screw it. Especially just because like if you can get him to seventy closer, you can rest him. It's over. Last game. It's exactly. Over. Yeah. Like if he's on sixty eight going to Florida, he's gonna play both games. Yes. Like I, I'm curious what happens with McDavid here in Edmonton because he didn't skate again today. That would suggest he he likely won't play the next time they play. He could play. He didn't go last night. They played great and they won. They beat up on Vegas. That was significant. But he is one assist away from a hundred, and Kucherov's chasing him down, which will be amazing if Kucherov gets there first and then McDavid second. That becomes Kucherov's stat. I think. Like yeah. who? I get it. It's only Lemieux or and Gretzky who have ever done it. But if Kucherov jumps ahead of the line and and does it before McDavid. Clinch the MVP, maybe. Uh, possibly, but um, 
yeah, I'm curious to see what happens with McDavid because obviously it's something substantial enough where he's completely off the ice for the most part. I know he was on the ice yesterday skating on his own, but they've only got a few games left. They're pretty much locked in that two seat now in the Pacific. They're going to be at home to start the playoffs. I, I don't know if he will play. Uh, Matthews, on the other hand, he's healthy. I think he chases 70 until he gets there, and then they figure it out. Here's Pierre Lebrun, our TSN Hockey Insider, joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Happy birthday, Pierre. Oh, my gosh. It, you're, you're, you're so plugged in. You have sources, don't you? I do. I've had multi. I can't tell you. It's like people are on eggshells around here. I've had three different people say, don't forget, it's Pierre's birthday. And How old are you, Pierre? Tell us. Uh, uh, 52. All right. I love okay. it. I love it. It's All a right. Nondescript, nondescript birthday. That's that a good number. Sense. That's right yeah. in a good wheelhouse where you get to just enjoy yourself, but it's not, you know, you're not necessarily in spotlight. I don't know. Are you a spotlight guy, though? Maybe you love being the birthday guy. No, quiet night tonight. Just uh, my wife and kids are going out for dinner after uh, I'm done work here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Enjoying the Masters. The Masters always happens to fall normally on my birthday weekend. So Amazing. I, I, Love watching the Masters, yeah. I love it. Well, it's good to have you on. And, you know, we were discussing these um, these pursuits of, of serious numbers. I mean, Matthews chasing 70, McDavid Kucherov mm-hmm. chasing 100 assists. Um, all three teams have clinched. They're all going to the playoffs. You know, for the most part, they know who they're going to play. And the Leafs are going to play Florida. Tampa's probably going to play Boston. Edmonton, probably Vegas, but you never know. That was big last night, them beating Vegas. They mm-hmm. may end up playing L.A. in the first round. But what is your prediction on Matthews and the amount he plays the rest of the way, chasing 70, and McDavid the rest of the way, chasing 100 assists? Yeah, it's interesting. And everyone around all that has been pretty coy about where this is headed because we all know what we're talking about is that you know these are some historical milestones that Matthews and McDavid and Kucherov can all attain here. And yet, uh, you know, all three teams are home and cool with not a whole lot to play for until the playoffs. Uh, Is the rest involved at some point, right? This is what we're talking about. And even more interestingly, obviously McDavid is out right now. My prediction is that McDavid gets into maybe one or two games before the end. Because I think the hundred assists does matter, and obviously it also matters to, to play another game or two to get in rhythm before the playoffs. So those things should probably line up well for him. But what's interesting to me is that both Matthews and McDavid have, have back-to-back game situations left. And that would be, like, if 70 was already done or not attainable for Matthews, I think there's no doubt in my mind he doesn't play one of those two games next week in, in, in the state of Florida. But if somebody's still on the line, I mean, you know, that's a big moment in not just his career, but in Leafs history, potentially. So I'm not saying there's an easy answer here. I I, I think it's a tough one. I think I would want him to achieve it. I think it's that important. You just, you know, cross your fingers and nothing bad happens out of it, right? And, And similar for McDavid. I mean, is it one? Is it two games? Obviously, the key thing is to be 110% come playoff time. And again, same with Kucherov. I mean, Tampa really can't go up or down now. So, you know, is there, does he have a game off or not before the playoffs? So all tricky coaching decisions, decisions that are made with the player. Um, and it'll be interesting to see next week how they handle that. Pierre, how, how much of a factor is where people reside as far as their thoughts on these three or four players we're talking about? We brought it up with Jonas on the top of the show where, you know, saying if McDavid or if Matthews gets 70, it would probably be a slam dunk for the, the Hart Trophy and Ted Lindsay, et cetera, et cetera. And if he lived in Denver and covered McKinnon every night, he would probably say, this is hands down McKinnon's trophy and nobody else <laughs> right. would touch it. So, it, it, like, is that a big factor? I I mean, if you look at the history of the PHWA voting, it's it, it, there's always been that narrative that East West and then, you know, people who cover what teams I know from uh, talking to both Eric to over the years, who had a, a long time influence on this. And then Frank Sarbelli is now the president of the page WA. We've actually looked at it as a association and seen not that much geographical bias. Interestingly, for some of these major awards, contrary to what a lot of people believe, I think people really listen. There's always some donkey votes, 
but that's why there's so many voters is to sort of cancel that out. And, you know, I would argue that, uh, you know, most years the right people win the awards. I, I don't think it's that controversial if, if you think about it. The only thing is this year with the heart, <laughs> this is as deep and wide open a choice as I can recall. I mean, all these guys deserve a, uh, you could argue for Kucherov for sure. I mean, he's in on like more than half his team's offense, right? I mean, McKinnon has carried Colorado at times and some big players, but now the lineup, uh, obviously Matthew 70, so rare. I mean, Mc, the Oilers, no one thought they'd make the playoffs and that David brings them all the way back. Um, and, you know, the guys that no one even talks about is Sidney Crosby potentially might will the Penguins in. And Roman Yossi has willed the Predators in. One of the most surprising teams of the year, the National Predators, Roman Yossi playing a million minutes and 20-plus goals. And he won't even get a sniff, probably. This is an unbelievable Hart Trophy year for voting. Pierre, where are you leaning? I mean, right now, I, th- I think I'm still McKinnon. But Matthews getting 70 will be big for me if he gets it. Uh, and what Kucherov continues to do is, is mind blowing. I think, unfortunately, with Connor McDavid, who there's no argument who the best player in the world is, it's him. But I think the injury here of the slightest of hairs might have a, an, an outcome here. Again, we, we put down five names on our ballots, but in such a close, close, close race, that could just be the hair that puts him, you know, below maybe the top two guys. So it's, it's going to be close. With Pierre Lebrun, our TSN Hockey Insider, uh, I wasn't anticipating a signing today, but we got one. Noah Hannafin yeah. signs an eight-year extension at seven point three five million in Vegas. Um, should Calgary take issue with this? Did they get enough in the trade when everyone knew this was coming? Of course, yeah, he's going to sign an extension. I wanted to clarify that with there. you, Hazy. What, what what would they take issue with? The, well, like the number he signed at. No, my my, they... underst- my understanding is if, Pierre. You correct me if I'm wrong. Pure rental cost A, B, and C. An acquisition of a player with an extension tied to it cost A, B, C, D, and E. Am I wrong in that? That's that is normally the case, but I will tell you <laughs> I'd that. Be pissed. No, I, what I would tell you is that uh, no one, no one, Anapin and his agent Piper Song gave Vegas no assurance they were going to sign when they got traded there. So how did it and, happen a, a month later? Well, like. It, well, I mean, Come listen, on. you can believe what you choose to believe. It came together pretty quickly in the last couple of days is what we're being told. And the other thing to remember is that Noah Anafin leading into the deadline was, was pretty convinced, him and his agent, that they were getting traded to Tampa and that the Vegas deal kind of caught them by surprise. Hmm. Um, you know, Tampa did everything they could to get him, and I think Tampa was going to try and sign him. And so from that perspective, I do believe that the Vegas thing actually needed a bit of time to settle for him to – be willing to talk extension. The interesting thing is to me is this, is that I, I remember I was on the shore earlier this year when I had reported that Hannafin had turned down eight years times seven, five from Calgary. Remember that a few months ago? Mm-hmm. And I, and I think noodles was like, you know, <laughs> how is this guy turning that down? Yeah. But that's a pretty hefty extension. And I think we were all in agreement. Could that deal even be out there on the market if you turn it down from Calgary? And it turns out the answer is yes. I mean, seven three five a year in Vegas with no state income tax is just as good, if not better, than seven point five a year in Calgary. Not to mention the actual hockey part of it, where you're with the team that's built to win now, and mm-hmm. and you're not going through a retool the next few years in Calgary. So listen, got to give credit where credit is due. And Noah Anafin and his agent Pat Brisson bet on themselves here. They turned down a pretty hefty extension in Calgary and thought. You know, let's go somewhere where we'll be happier and hopefully we still get a decent deal on the day ever. Yeah, and listen, he, he's fit in well. Vegas is an interesting team, though, because they're, they're going to get in, but they're not really cruising. Like, they got crushed last they're night. They're missing so many guys, right? Right. Well, yeah. I mean, Hurdle is there now. Yeah, you know, but Hurdle. Trangelo didn't play last night. Yeah, Stone, Stone has been out. out. And Stone, you know, who knows what's going to happen there. We'll see. He's going to come back. Probably. I, I would put money on the fact that he'll play. <laughs> I, I fully First expect game. Mark Stone will play. And the goaltending, there's been some ins and outs yeah. on that front. Sure. But still, mm-hmm. it's not as if they are rocking. Like, they are scary. No. I think they're still scary because of their history, their championship pedigree, and how good all these players are. But, mm-hmm. you know, we'll, 
we'll see what comes of it. And there's other teams in the West, including Dallas, including Colorado, including Edmonton, Vancouver. You really should be able to pick your opponent. Because like, uh, no one t- would want to do that, Jonas. Then but that Bolton, would be – you don't think so? Then it's Bolton material. Oh, we're picking you. And then that team comes out because the league is so close anyway. And uses <laughs> yeah, but that Pierre, think of how Come fascinating on. that would be as opposed to well, just of course. the same product. thing. Like that's the one thing about some of the things that the PWHL implemented. It kind of gets your attention. You're like, that's For different. For sure it does. Yeah. It, so it's like the NHL. Take note. It's like – if you want to just say, oh, our league's great, the diehards are going to watch, that, that's fine. And I'm a traditionalist. I love old school stuff, but just mix it up a little bit. Hayes brought this up years ago where yeah. he's like, let somebody pick an opponent, man. It's a great idea. And then, you'll have, uh, then you'll have some animosity. You want to talk about building a rivalry or hatred or like intense games? For sure. That, that'll do it. Well, look just, at... we should let, we should let uh, Overdrive pick the least opponent every year. Yeah. How about we start with that? That's, um, that's a good idea. Now, now, uh, or, uh, or where Arizona's going to play next year. Let us pick. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hazy's got a new hate on City. I it's, hate Salt Lake it, City already. They're not even there. No, I know. I'm aware of it. You've probably have you, have Googled. Have you been? No, of course no, not. I have no interest. No interest. Okay. I was actually there. I uh, covered the 2002 Winter Olympics when, okay. when the Canadian men ended their 50-year drought in, mm-hmm. in hockey. Um, I, I liked it. Uh, you have to work hard to find a beer <laughs> because of the rules there. But yeah. uh, but uh, you know, well, think I'm about that on its own, Pierre. How like how much sense <laughs> would that make if you got to work to find beer? That's no. Disgusting. I think it's, my understanding is it's changed a lot from <laughs> uh, from all that time ago. Yeah, it's and modernized. It, 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 Listen. All you can do is 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 look at what is happening. One of the things that uh, you know you can look it up yourself. But Salt Lake City and area is one of the fastest growing areas in America. Mm-hmm. Ironically, much like Scottsdale, by the way. So <laughs> those are two of the fastest growing areas in in that country. Uh, and one one team might be moving for the other if the league is able to pull this off. But um, uh, listen, none of this is ideal. I mean, no. I, I mean, I thought, I thought, you know. Yesterday, when I asked Bill Daly for a quote, you know, often when you get a quote in those moments, it's kind of like a, a statement that doesn't say a lot. I thought it was telling that his quote to us yesterday was that they're working towards a, a, a solution for what is, quote, a challenging and difficult situation. Of course, we're going to say no guff, mm-hmm. but that's the league. Basically, that was the league for the first time publicly acknowledging what we've been talking about, right? Saying that, you know, this this probably doesn't work anymore. Um, and so that's not insignificant, but you know, it's, it's, it's a very complicated transaction transactions that the league is trying to manufacture here between getting the coyotes off the hands of Alex Morello and then mm-hmm. turning around and, and selling them to Ryan Smith and Salt Lake. And uh, as I was told again today, uh, this is not a slam dunk. It's, it's, it's the plan. It's the goal. But there's still some hoops to go through here. It's a very complicated transaction, and um, there are lots of lawyers involved. Did yeah. Marty Walsh's comments have, like, did it kick start? Would we still be here without those comments, or did those comments at the All-Star game where he publicly criticized the scenario in front of Bettman, in front of Daly, did that kind of mm-hmm. kick start this process, Pierre? Yeah, I was there in that scrum when he did it. Uh, certainly we had a lot of raised eyebrows. It, it probably... Uh, you know, certainly was part of all this. Oh, dog, I will tell you the thing that I retain the most in this process. And I mean, I've been talking about this for 15 years with this team, but at the Stanley Cup final last June, I don't know if you guys remember, but Bettman and Daly had their annual State of the Union right before game one of Vegas and Florida. And they kind of came out swinging uh, on Arizona in a way that they had never done before. They basically put everything on notice and said, They've got a year to figure this out. We can't just keep, you know, waiting on hope. And that was that's when I remember leaving the news conference last year for a game one of the cup finals saying, okay, this actually could have some finality to it. And here we are uh, nearly 12 months later. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, um, I found it interesting that, that Andre Torini, the head coach of the Coyotes, referenced the rumors as the – Launching pad for when they lost. I like to tied it to the date. I exactly. love that. Is it's brilliant. Always it's, it's always the media's fault. It's always the media's fault. Brilliant. Do you want to? Play? Let's play it. This is what what uh, the head coach of the Coyotes had to say last night about these rumors and how it might have had a negative effect on the team. 
<laughs> I can tell you exactly the date. The first time that that rumor came, it was January 24th, and we that's the day we started a 14-game losing streak. So we we cannot pretend did not affect our team. So uh, <laughs> that's we. <laughs> Unfortunately, that had a huge impact in our season, and we not we did not deal with it the right way at the time. So now we we've been given another opportunity to deal with it differently. Yeah, those nope. are golfers on that team. They really <laughs> love Arizona. Man. I love it, man. Somebody said Salt Lake, and their ears went up, and yeah. they're like, "No, no rumors," way. and they're they're going to a Cup final. There's no rumors. They would have won 14 in a row. He's uh, Turing is a really good dude. Uh, Bear, they call him. Um, it, it, it's been awful for everyone there involved, right? To deal with this. I mean, imagine that you're a guy with a family on that team, and you're, you know, you got to make plans for your kids in school next year, and and you know, the NHLPA has tried to keep the leadership group of that team as updated as possible, but the PA is basically is saying to them, and my understanding is what we've been reporting the last 24 hours, which is, you know, they could end up in Salt Lake, but they may not. I mean, this is, you know, they're in the middle of all this, and let's see where it goes. So. That's not easy, boy, if you're a player on that team. No, it's not. It is not. And uh, yet, it as you've you've been reporting and others, like it could happen pretty quickly. And then, you know, we brought this up earlier, Pierre, and I, I'm curious how you would respond to this. The the prospective owner down in Utah um, is very loud, tweeting out poll questions. What should I name my team? We want in. <laughs> We're doing interviews. How is this different than what Balsilli was doing that the NA and the and Balsilli was outcast immediately. You, how dare you speak publicly? That's not how we operate in the NHL. Meanwhile, down in Salt Lake, they're having parades and, and poll questions on what they're going to name their team. Why, why is that cool with the NHL? Well, I guess there's a lot of differences. One, one is that uh, Balsilli was talking about moving a team before he even had the green light to pretend that he was going to try and buy one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if memory serves. Um, uh, so that's one thing. And the other thing I would tell you, and I, I, I've actually interviewed Ryan Smith, the Utah Jazz owner, twice in the last 12 months mm-hmm. for the Athletic. And my interpretation of when those things have happened is that those were cleared with the league, that, that he was allowed to speak publicly. So I think that he's been in step with the league every time he's done interviews. And, and I think he has absolutely made sure that, that the league knows, you know, what he's, you know, what he's up to and, and, and his interactions, no question. I, I, I mean, that's, you know, he didn't say that to me, but that's my impression because, listen, I've tried in the past to line up prospective owners and, and some of them don't want to say anything to your point because they don't want to rock the boat with, with the commissioner. But in this case, I think that from the get-go, uh, Ryan Smith has been in lockstep, I think, with, with Gary Bettman in terms of what he can say and, and his, you know, his, his expression of interest of having NHL hockey um, and I and I tell you, it is it is it sure comes across as genuine his desire to put a team in there. And remember, it's all tied into Salt Lake getting the Winter Olympics again and building a new rink and all those things. Mm-hmm. Could be problematic, Pierre. I mean, they got seven players under deals under contract next year. It would not shock me if people hear the term Salt Lake. They could be twenty eight. They could be thirty, and people just say, no, "I'm not going." So right. you 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 can go ahead and go to Salt Lake, but I'm not doing it. So they, they, but, they so, could, so not that so they need the more solution? of a mess. Yeah, but I was going to say, what's the solution? Because players have been grumbling on that team about not wanting to play in Mullet Arena anymore either. Yeah. Well, I get so. it, but w- wouldn't you think a bunch of people would come together with all of the players in general and say, "What do you guys think about Salt Lake?" Like I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like they don't care. Everyone dude. in Salt Lake wants hockey there it's just i don't know carolina got lucky because it worked out and now they filled the building and it's one of the best fan bases in the league but what if it doesn't you look like a bunch of dummies it's like why'd you pick there well i don't know what could possibly look worse than playing in a college rink but Mm. and that's just me well you're right (laughs) yeah no that that's totally understandable and the thing is once they go there though that's your choice you know so if in five or ten years salt lake isn't working and it's not still a you know, burgeoning metropolis. It's like, well, you had your choice and you chose there. It probably can't get worse than Arizona. There's no questioning that. 
But I was right. Like, if you're Clayton Keller and you have four more years on your contract, yeah. and you're like, I didn't sign there. Like, yeah, I'm going to go to Salt Lake. I can't golf anymore, and I yeah. can't get a beer after 9 p.m. Real fun. Check, please. <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> I guess uh, you could no. demand a trade. Well, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what the answer is, but it'll never happen while I'm still alive. The answer is putting a second NHL team in Toronto. But on yes. that note. Yes. Happy birthday, yeah. mon ami. <laughs> Somebody's got to do the class. dumb and dumber. Attaboy. Someone's got to do the dumb and dumber beginning when they pull up in the Ferrari to the hotel. When they get to Salt Lake, someone's got to do that with yes. the ski suits. That would be legendary. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Pierre. Happy birthday, buddy. Uh, Thank you for doing this. Right on, right on. Pierre LeBron, our TSN Hockey Insider, joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Check out Maple Toyota's huge truck and SUV lineup, including Tundra, Forerunner, Highlander, and Grand Highlander in stock and ready to deliver. Visit mapletoyota.com. Yeah, it can't get worse than Arizona. Like, it's not no. that uh, you're, you're leaving some amazing place to – it's not like when Winnipeg left or Quebec City left. You're like, that. that is a great hockey market, and you're leaving. Arizona has never supported that team. The ownership's always been a mess. Um it's just, this is, you're picking Salt Lake City, okay. But you're also, you're really putting the the new owner in Salt Lake and the fan base in a tough spot because the comparison's going to be Vegas, yes. maybe Seattle. Those are expansion teams. You're getting the Coyotes team. You're getting that organization. Well, maybe it's better that and, only seven guys are going there then. It's just, it's fresh. It's basically like an expansion team. Yeah. And li listen, the NHL, they got it. They was a grand slam what they've done in Vegas. Unbelievable how it's worked out there. And Seattle, by all accounts, has been really, really solid. So, and they're in a bind here. Like, you know, I'm joke. We're all joking around about a lot of stuff. They're in a bind because they're Arizona. So it's, it's a mess. They've allowed it to go that far. That's a they could have left there a decade ago, and they yep. chose not to. So a lot of it is self-inflicted, the mess. Yes. But they're trying to rectify it. I just... It just seems so rushed. Like, so literally, quickly, and it's a couple Lake months City. ago, it's like, well, we might still build an arena here. And it's like, well, that's actually not going to work out. Salt Lake City. Yeah, now we're just, we're pulling the curtains on that, and we're going to Salt Lake. No, no one cares about what people in Salt Lake feel. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fill in the blank. <laughs> like Fill it. in the blank. Yeah, I like it. Um, all right. We're uh, tracking the Masters. J.P. Ricciardi coming up. Bruce Boudreau in studio in about an hour. We love that. I had a Leafs uh, Devils tonight. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. I'd like to offer an apology to Joe from the Bridge. I was very mad at Joe from the Bridge about 20 seconds ago when he sent me a direct message and said, you got it wrong with the contracts going to Salt Lake. And I said, Joe, that's what you wrote in the group chat mm -hmm. and he said you read it wrong it's after next season so there's more than seven players going to salt lake city it's the season after that okay. but it's all for naught because i just had a conversation with pierre thinking seven players were going to salt lake and i look like a donkey <laughs> and i was Somewhat frustrated with Joe from the bridge, but he straightened me out real quick. Yeah, well, as he should. Joe from the yeah. bridge is an insider, too. We want it on record that oh Joe from the God. bridge. I almost passed out eating dinner seeing him. He's like, I'm an insider. I brought this up two and a half months ago. Yep. And then he played the clip. Yeah, he did. He went back. Well, because this is the beauty. Joe from the bridge runs everything on the TV side for us. Man, can he make himself look good, can he? Look Any brilliant. good clip he ever says, he'll dig it up from seven years ago and be like, remember this? It just cut <laughs> brilliantly because we gave we, we didn't even give credit. We were kind of goofing on the fact that Joe from the bridge had mentioned to us that he had heard Arizona to Salt Lake City and it's going to happen quick. Right? He had inside information. I have no idea how Joe was accumulating that information, but he had it. And we blurted it out. We moved on with our lives, not thinking anything of it. And now this story has come out over the last couple of days. And Joe from the bridge, rightfully so, wants full credit. And to the point where he went back into the archives, found the clip, posted it, tweeted it out, and I think asked other people to retweet, which is great. That's how you get insider status. Joe from the bridge should be at the next uh, Board of Governors. Yep. I'll tell you something that will make me pass out. If I just turn, like I open my eyes and insider trading's on and Joe from the bridge is on the far right <laughs> beside Dregs, <laughs> I will pass out. I want to see that, though. I love Joe from the bridge. He's the best. And I think he has inside information that we should Maybe all acknowledge. Yeah. All right. So Tom Brady, who has been oh. completely off the radar for a long time. I, I mean, it's not football season. 
Uh, Tom's trying to figure out, is he going to be a color analyst? Is he going to be an owner with the Vegas um, Raiders? He might be a part of our new segment next week. I'll tell you that. He very well could be. Yep. The slide is coming. We're going to develop it a little bit more, and we're going to release it next week. He was on a podcast called the Deep Cut Podcast, which is, I guess, <laughs> in some barber shop or something like that, and guys are getting their haircuts. And this was the back and forth on the idea of him possibly still being available to play in the NFL. Hey, one day there's a situation, right? Maybe it's the 49ers, maybe, you know, headed to the playoffs. Offense is great. Patriots, somebody, could be somebody, somebody, Raiders, look, could be, you never know. God forbid somebody goes down, would you pick up that phone? I'm not opposed to it. If they would, I don't know if they're going to let me if I become an owner in the NFL team, but I don't know if, uh, I don't know. I'm always going to be in good shape, I'll always be able to throw the ball. So to come in for a little bit, like MJ coming back. Um, I don't know if they let me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. So I can't figure out if he's calculated enough to hook up whoever's podcast that is, unless it's his or he's got ownership in it, to understand the second he says that it's going viral. Like, it's the best thing you can get out of one of those shows, right? Like, yes. we do this for a living. If we were to interview Tom Brady and he said that, we would blast it everywhere. And then what happens is everyone around the world plays it and goes, well, he was on some show called Overdrive. It's the best possible promotion. And I don't know if he was aware of it, was it premeditated, or is he just oh, spitball? Dude, that is premeditated. He said, yeah, I'll come on your podcast and get a haircut, mm -hmm. but do me a favor and ask me this because I'm working out right now, and I want to send out a vibe. I want to be Lloyd Christmas in Salt Lake City leaning up against the bar with my ass hanging out, and I'm sending out a vibe right now. And Ask me the question because I want to play. Okay, can we clarify something before we move on? Yes. Do you think Harry and Lloyd went to Salt Lake City? No, you dummy. They went to Denver. Uh, no, they, okay, good. They Aspen, went to Aspen. All right. I just, Aspen. You've said it twice. I'm like, do you yeah. think Harry and Lloyd went to Salt Lake Dude, City? That okay, would be good. the dumbest thing ever if I thought <laughs> Dumb and Dumber was in Salt Lake City and not Aspen. <laughs> that is the dumbest. place called Aspen. <laughs> <laughs> they are Man. Islanders. They are Islanders out there. They're known as yeah. Islanders or Mountaineers. You know what? I've been Mountain thinking about the Islander comment, Hayes. Yeah. I think it's Victoria. I think Victoria, British Columbia go by Islanders. That might be the case because it is Vancouver Island. We'll have to ask Ray when we get him on next. That is possible because I was speaking with the ladies down at uh, Makeup today. I was down there because I was in here doing Sports Center, and they were what buzzing. What are you barking about today before you get to that? Well, what you, what? In Sports Center, what are we doing? I was doing a Leaf thing. We'll okay. get. Actually, I'm curious to get your take on that. I want to continue with the Brady thing. But the ladies were buzzing about the Islander comment earlier in the week. <laughs> and uh, I, I honestly don't know, like, why it was so stupid to, to people. Like, I just think of the East Coast and the water. And <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. Jonas, like, give it a rest. Like, I just think of, like, fishing and all the water and everything. And everyone's an Islander. And so I is, just Calif it is California an island? No, dude. No. I, I was listening and I didn't bat an eye. To yes, didn't bat an eye. Exactly. No, like I knew I know this what he was saying. This guy's all sensitive because he went to university for four days out in Halifax and he thinks he's a he's a I'm a Haligonian. I am. I'm a maritimer. You're an islander. I'm a I'm a maritimer. Yes. If you're from That's Prince Edward word. Island, yeah, maritimer. Yeah. If you're from Newfoundland, possibly yeah. Vancouver Island, and a, and a listener and a big fan Fredericton? of the show, Andrew Holland, no. Mr. Andrew Holland, he corrected and he said, "Jeff, I think you meant Mare Timer." Yeah, and I have to say something. I meant to say Islander because I was committed to that, and I don't know. Someone's there. There's a group, and it might be just PEI. It might be They're just an Islander. PEI. That could They're be Islander. the case. That very well could be the case. Um, all right. So anyway. This Brady clip. He mentioned he wanted it out there. He wants he, it out there, and I don't know why he's using the Michael Jordan return as an inspiration, like when he went to Washington, which was ridiculous. I think well, he's referencing Joe Flacco, is what he's referencing here. Like Flacco just did it for the Browns, right? Like that's what he's saying here. He's not saying training camp the whole season. He's saying week thirteen, week fourteen. Team going to the playoffs, quarterback blows their knee out, done for the year, call me up. I can do what Flacco did, only when I get to the divi the wild card game, I won't throw picks and look like a mess. You're not getting the message. I know. I think I know what the message is, and I want you to just let this marinate. 
I think he was sending out the bat signal to the 49ers saying, I'm the only guy that can take care of Boogeyman. So if you want me to show up late in the season and take care of Boogeyman, who is Patrick Mahomes, because Brock Purdy ain't going to do it. Mm -hmm. So if you want me to, you want to give it a shot with me, let's give it a shot. Sign me late in the season, whatever. I'll come in mid-season. I don't know. I don't know if a situation like Brady at his age, which is just Yeah, what is he, 47 now? 47 years old? But, but who knows? Who knows? I what came would up, he need? Well, so I was going to ask you guys. I came up with a list of teams that if I was their GM, I might think about making a call. Okay. Tell me if you agree with this. Cleveland. I know they have the contract. They have Watson in the contract. You okay, can't. Okay, so no. Is I don't Watson going to be healthy to play this year? Like, is he supposed well, to on a track to play? He's a Band-Aid all the time. I don't know what the yeah. latest is. but And by the way, when he is 100%, he, he hasn't it been hasn't that been good. great anyway. Bad. Yeah, Vegas. I'd do it because Garoppolo is not there the anymore, is no. he? No, I don't even know who their quarterback. is. I'm not sure what they ended up doing there. Um, so that's a good one. Yeah, and Vegas. He, is he going to own Vegas? Or that's part the thing, of, and he did say that, saying. like he owns a part of the team. What about Denver? No, Russ. Did they sign anybody? Or are they just going to draft somebody? They've traded their picks to get Russ. Um, who did they get? They got somebody. I don't think it was Gardner like Minshew is who they have. Yeah, Eggs. yeah, but they're wow. too bad. They're they're awful. He's not going they there. Eight, so. I think they had eight wins last year, which is a borderline miracle. But I don't think they're good enough. Yeah, go there for eight wins. Yeah. What about San, San Fran? Is the only scenario? Yeah, but they're that not going to turn their back. I don't on think Purdy. they're turning. Like, that's Purdy. not happening. Okay, who else do you have? What about the Vikings? Yes, right. Yes, Vikings is a great example. Because oh, yeah. they, they have a lot TV of weapons. Paul wants to head out to me. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's where Favre was at the end of his career. Um, uh, but that's an example of a team that's been well run. They've got a lot of talent. They got a good coach. They just don't have a quarterback. Here's my Let favorite. Let me ask one. you, Jonas. Yeah. If you got to the Super Bowl again against Mahomes, you think Brock Purdy could get it done against Patrick Mahomes? I actually know the answer, but I want to hear your thoughts. Do I? No, but do I think exactly? Brady you think a 40, can at forty-seven after seven-year-old Brady. Years? 40, Dude, I would yeah, take my chance. There's a good poll question for Twitter. Would you take your chance on a 47-year-old Tom Brady or Brock Purdy? You want to go to the Super Bowl with one of them? What, In a which one-off. One, do you want? one game. One game, Super Bowl. It's the Bowl. Super Bowl. That's it. Who do you want? A 47-year-old Brady or a fully healthy, what's Brock Purdy, 28? Yeah, no, he's, he's mid-20s, 25, 26. I'll take Tom Brady, man, for one game. <laughs> kind of crazy. Damn. It Dude, is crazy. Not. I mean, well, the guy's never been able to run well to begin with. No, not in his twenties. I know. I mean, he hasn't. He but hasn't think, played now in a year and a half. He didn't play great that that's final the year. Thing. Got ugly. I remember again. that last year in Tampa? Yeah, it was like. Uh. But they also had they had injuries. Their offense was really scrambly. They had a new coach. Remember, Arians left. Um, you want to know my favorite one? Yeah, go ahead. L.A. Stafford gets hurt again. Hmm. But staff. But we're presuming. Hell from Stafford, but you're saying long term? No, just like six games in the season, yeah. Stafford's hurt again. That's probably an example of it, though. Like, it, although no Aaron Donald there, I'm sure, I'm not sure what's yeah. going to happen with LA in the future. Good, some good receivers. Minnesota's the team, but I think they're going to try to trade up and get a. But he's right; he's not going to Minnesota. Uh, probably not. Although, yeah, probably not. I don't think he's going to play. Like, I, I can't imagine. And how is this going to work? If you're Fox, you paid this guy like 350 million dollars to be in the booth. Are you staying in the booth or not? Are you going to be there halfway through the year and then pull the shoot? I think they might have. They, they have don't Greg, have. They, isn't, don't they, they have Greg, Greg Olson? Olson. Like, yes. That's, that's another like, guy. Cool. Talk about sliding to the DMs. I wonder if Olson has the stones to slide into Brady's and say, hey, can you make up your mind? What is happening here? I'd like to figure out where I'm going. Um, but yeah, Brady will be 47 in August. I like how he just slides in. I'll always be in shape. <sighs> Thanks. Like, Tim. that's kind of an unnecessary comment. Like, we get it. TB12. Just hey, lets everyone eat an ice cream. But I think I think if you are always in shape, like, I think Gary Roberts would say that, and he's earned the right to say that. So is Tom Brady. Yeah. If you are always in shape, you can say it. Yeah, I guess you're right. What can we say with confidence? We've always got something to say. That is true. That should be the slogan for the show. We'll bother people. At some point, that I will give you a guarantee. But what we can we will say, say with high on the 400 North going 120? That's yours. The O Dog, what he will do is activate a conversation 
Northbound on the four. He is the stop and chatter. Yes. Him. Or the drive and chatter. Drive and chat. He's established a whole new chat. Dude, it's a drive it was the and best. chat. My window came down and I, I grabbed my jersey like this, pointing at his Leaf, Leafs hoodie, and I gave the thumbs up and he looked at me and he goes, I was at morning skate. And I'm like, I can't do line combos going northbound yeah. on the four hunch. What should Domi get this summer? <laughs> yes. I don't know, man. Should the first line stay intact? <laughs> 400. I chatter. still believe in Joseph Wall game <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just laying on the horn. Yeah. All right. Well, those are uh, those are the stories of the day with TB12. All right. I'll tell you what I got into on SportsCenter. I'm curious how you guys would respond to my list. Talk All right. to me. Yeah, we'll get to that coming up. J.P. Ricciardi will join us. Bruce Boudreau still to come as well. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. All right, every day we announce a current to former Maple Leaf player, and by the end of the week, you'll have five players, and you can call in and name all five. You're going to see a upcoming game. This week we're giving away Leafs Red Wings April 13th, Saturday night. Last home game of the season for the Leafs. Plus, we're throwing in a $250 Vanilla Visa prepaid card. Vanilla Visa prepaid cards are available for purchase at Petro Canada. Today's player of the day is Dale McCourt. Dale, Dale McCourt. McCourt is your player of the day. All right. So, <laughs> Leafs Devils tonight. Coming up on Sports Center in a little bit, you'll be able to see this. I think they've probably already blasted it out online, probably up on YouTube. But I was asked, among other things, to come up with the five members of the Maple Leaf organization facing the most pressure to succeed in the playoffs. I'll get to my list here momentarily. Jonas, O, oh, do you guys have anyone in particular that you think would be at the top of your list? Who is number one for you? The whole organization, players, coaches, management, president, everything. For me, it's a slam dunk at number one. It's Ilya Samsonov. Woo! Love it. Quick shooter. Yeah. Slam dunk, eh? Because you can have depth scoring. You can have your defense core holding the fort. If you don't have a goaltender, not only just play well, but steal you some games. And Bobrovsky's performance would be an extreme. It doesn't have to be that. But it's got to be damn good that you have zero chance in the playoffs. There's just no other way around it. You could talk about Matthews being clutch and Marner and Nylander and Tavares elevating their performances of years past. But if you do not have a goaltender back there that's consistent and delivering performances on a nightly basis, you have zero chance to win or have success in the playoffs. Therefore, he would be my number one. Mm. Jonas? You're pissed off, aren't you, that you didn't have him number one because of that reason? That's very valid reasoning. I, I think I had him in my top five. I had him at four. Um, the only thing I would say on that is I think that applies to all 16 goalies for all 16 teams. It's the nature of the position that you have to have it. You have to have good goaltending. And if that's the case, then the goal is number one for every single team, every single organization. That's a fair And you start at two. So I, I did not... Apply that logic, but it's very logical. It's incredible. It's a hundred percent reasonable. Jonas, he, he did not make my top five. You don't have Samson up in your top five. No, really, because I think like if he doesn't play well, they'll just change the goalie, right? Right, but then they're down 0-2 in the series, and then guess who's taking the blame for being 0-2? If they lose, he's not going to be like top of the blame game. If he's a mess, if he's getting shelled, okay, anyway. fair. All right, it's, it's a, your it's list. A, it's, ah, it's fair. Your list. It's, it's your fair. list. Fair. It's your list. I would have. Brendan Shanahan, number one. You have Shanahan at one. Yes, because if this doesn't work, we will be talking about everything that preceded this. Mm -hmm. We'll be saying this is 10 years, 10 yeah, years? He's been here a decade. Literally 10 years, I think, this month. Been here 10 Might years. Might even be a few days from now, the mm -hmm. anniversary. We'll be saying 10 years, one playoff series, or whatever. I think it's Shanahan, and I think, I mean, you can tell us your list. Who is your number one? I had Mitch Marner at one. I had Marner at one for a variety of reasons. Um, I led the charge with the fact that Matthews is locked up, Nylander's locked up, Marner's not. And even if it's unfair to him, if this fails and there is some determination within the organization, even Keith Pelly may factor into this. Mm -hmm. He says, you have to change one of these guys. It's going to be him. Like, it's going to be Mitch. They're, they're, they're not trading Austin. They're not trading Willie. 
Like those two, their contracts haven't even kicked in. Those two guys are not going anywhere. Tavares is here for another year, and then that'll free things up, and we'll see. I mean, but there's I, a world where it could be. I mean, yeah. yeah, but I also think, and the point I made was, if he's not on Matthew's line, I think it's even more amplified. Like he's got to drive play on his own line. He's got to prove he's worthy of the 11 million. You know, they've been cooking here without him. He's been here since day one. I had Matthews at two. I, I had Marner and Matthews were both going to be joined at the hip because it's their team. You know, it's their team. It's their legacy. This team wins. You go to those two guys first. If they lose, you go to those two guys first. I had Shanahan at three, Samson on four, Keefe at five. Like, that was my list. But anyway. Good list. There's no wrong answers. Good. Everybody, they need to get it done on a just. Everybody needs to get it done. There's yeah. just no other way around it. You can debate it and toss around your top five, but number one, I always like it's got to be the goaltending. And uh, I'm sure if you had MJ on, he would say last year the difficulty was scoring. Mm-hmm. So then you would go to the offensive players. So yep. that's been the issue when they lose, especially in the biggest games. An A issue. An issue. An issue. An issue. Yeah. And there you go. We'll see what Bruce Boudreaux will say on that. Bruce is coming up in studio in the next hour. J.P. Ricciardi as well. A lot of news in baseball, including where he stands on the Blue Jays moving forward. And what a Mariners player had to say about John Schneider mm-hmm. yesterday that caught the ire of many. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2.